There's a really, really cool, delicate feature that some blouses have. They are called pin tags or release tags. They're very, very fun to do. And I've done that. I've got a blouse to share that has that feature. And I'm showing you how to do that and get really, really precise results. Sneak peek, satin leopard print. Stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing Today I have a blouse to share with you that I have made a while back and I have worn it out before I just hadn't had the chance to collate the sewing footage together and you know produce this video until now This is a Zamora blouse from Itch to Stitch I believe it was one of the first patterns released by this brand a few years ago so it's one of the older patterns and I purchased it early last year during a sale so it had been sitting in my computer for a, a pretty long time before I actually made it it's not the type of garment that would take you just like an afternoon to make I think it does have quite a lot of nice details there it was always a design that I was drawn to and that's why I purchased the pattern so it does have a V neckline when you look at it there are buttons going down there is a tie sewn onto the neckline that you can tie up in a bow. On this front area from the shoulders down, there are four pin tucks on each side. So four here, four there. Super nice and delicate. And even the pattern uh, description says intricate and it is sort of intricate, you know. The hem of this blouse is curved so it's shorter on the sides and then it goes curved out longer towards the front and the back. There are bust darts here on the side and then on the front you have the option of sewing two waist darts or one or none <laughs> and at the back there's one waist dart each on each side. There are sleeves and they have slight gathers here on the shoulders. There are two lengths bracelet length and three quarter lengths. The fabrics that would work for this style are lightweight wovens with or without stretch. So you know some shirtings have a little bit of stretch. So shirtings, rayon, linen, crepe, satin, that type of fabric, lightweight woven. I've chosen a lightweight satin fabric, totally polyester, nothing special with the fabric. Um, I don't usually do animal print and especially leopard print is just not my thing. But this specific fabric had blue tones in the leopard print and that's what caught my eye when I saw this at the fabric shop and that's why I got some fabric and I made this blouse with leopard print but with blue in there. <laughs> this pattern comes from sizes double zero to 20 and individual cup sizes A through double D and so the largest measurement available for the bust in this pattern with a double D cup is 49 inches and for the hips is 48 inches. Now it is a roomy type blouse. There are about five inches of positive ease at the bust and the hips, a little less at the waist, three inches. So considering that I should have made a size 14, but I made a size 12. Um, I do look at the finished garment measurements. I'm going to show you three fit photos of me wearing this while I was making it so you can see. So you're not shocked if you give this blouse a go. <laughs> the first one shows a front picture of me just half making this after I've sewn the pin tucks. And you can see that it looks really low cut. So that V looks extremely plunging. And when I tried it on and saw this on myself, I was like, oh, okay. Cause I could actually see the middle portion of my bra there, but don't fear when the ties are on that neckline, you won't see a single thing. It is a modest V, it's not going to show your bra or cleavage or anything. So I'm just letting you know. I did hand baste my darts first to check, you know, that they were okay. I have a good experience with C cups on each to stitch where sometimes I don't have to lower the dart and sometimes it's only minimal for the C cup, like half an inch. And you can see there on this picture that the bust dart fits me really well. You can also see that I have hand basted all the dots on the front and I think there's just too much shaping for what I want and for the type of fabric that I'm working with. It is a satin. I don't think satin fabric looks great with uh, styles that are form fitting. Like you could just see all my curves there, my waist, my hips, too much. So I decided not to sew the dots on the front. 
I did decide however to sew the darts on the back as I mentioned this blouse has a lot of details right so I can't share all that with you here because we would be here for hours you know it took a while to make the blouse but I am going to show you how I managed to do all the markings on this blouse you know it was a fabric that was a tad difficult to mark and there are a lot of things to mark on the fabric an overview of the pattern pieces and I'm going to show you how I sewed these pin tags from start to finish. So you'll see all the footage of all these intricate pin tags that you will find in other designs as well. And it's nothing to run away from. They are really fun to sew and they look really cool. So let's hop into up close and sew personal. This blouse has all these markings, all these lines that need to be transferred onto the fabric to create that those little pleats on the front. Lots of lines, they need to be super accurate and the best way I found to mark on my satin fabric was using a red friction pen. Now I have tested this, I scribbled on a corner and then pressed it and it did disappear so I'm quite confident I'm not going to have marks on my fabric. So on the ends of these, I just punched in dots using a sharp pen, another pen, whatever, and then I just drew dots like that through there, dot, 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 all the way, all these dots. They all have different lengths, you know, and on the top, I traced out the edge of the shape there. All these pleats have been trued, that's why all those sharp edges like that, and I drew the start of the lines there on the fabric too, and so then I just pull this back and I'm going to show you all the marks on the fabric. Maybe you can see them, but there's the dot that I drew there, dot, 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 dot. And you see the lines going up. And I even traced all these little edges there of the truing. It's all traced with my red pen. And I'm going to be super careful when I cut this. I'm actually going to use a scissors to cut all that to have precision. And then my other side, after I cut it, hasn't been marked. So I'm going to have to place my pattern piece with the print on the fabric like flipped over to do the same markings and transfer them to the other side it's the only way i found that i can mark this fabric appropriately and i think a pen gives you a really nice straight line and really accurate comparing to like chalk or tracing with my tracing paper the only color i have with my tracing paper is yellow and it's not going to show on this light colored fabric it's just gonna disappear <laughs> so this is the best way. I have the main pattern pieces here for the blouse this is the back that's cut on the fold this is the front and this is where I did all that unconventional marking to do all those lines that were there there is also a side bust out there there are cup size options and I've chosen a C cup as usual with this brand this is the sleeve, I'm making the long sleeve. There is a three quarter length sleeve with a different cuff piece for that. This is the cuff piece that is for this length and I have lengthened my sleeve by an inch. These are the neckties, there's two pieces that are cut the same on the fold, there's a fold right there. This is the back and up close you can see how I've marked the back darts with red friction pen as well. So I did that by punching holes into the pattern piece and then marking dot, dot, dot and dot and then putting pins through the dots to mark the dots on the other side and then with my ruler drawing the dots. On the front here there are two dots on the waist, if you can see there the red lines there and there. Now I did mark them on and I will hand base these dots closed to see how it fits on me but I highly suspect I'm not going to be sewing these darts. I'd rather just have more ease at the front and at the waist. I do, however, like the back shaping that darts provide on the back. This is one of the fronts. This is the center here. This is the arm side here for the sleeve. And there are marks for all these release tucks that they're going to be. There's one there, two, three, and four. At the bottom of there, I have dots that match the lines that go together there. Those two, those two, and they go they go up there and there. So the instructions have you press these in all sorts of ways to mark them and then top stitch them on the right side. 
but that is not going to work with this fabric satin doesn't really press that well and if I start pressing these I'm going to lose these marks because this is a friction pen and then I won't have any accuracy for anything what I'm going to do from the bottom of these release tucks I'm going to be pinning these together this is the front there this is where the interfacing is going to go I haven't fused that on because I don't want steam or heat on my fabric yet or all the marks are going to get erased so I'm leaving that for a bit later so I have these two I'm going to put a pin through these two dots there and just pin the lines together so you can see on one side I have the line I'm going to put the pin through and it's going to come out on this other side and I'm going to do that all the way up to the top and there are four of these little release tucks now they aren't that they aren't they're sort of like tiny 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 pleats because they're not closed off at the bottom so I'm matching that here that's where it's going to be left open there so this is the other side it looks crazy right now this is the center here this is the arm side and you can see these little four tucks have been pinned the one closer to the center is longer then it gets shorter and shorter and shorter what I'm going to do now on the sewing machine is do a basting stitch to hold this in place right on the line I'm going to use a long stitch length because I'm going to be removing that at a later step and just because I'm going to be applying steam after that to the top I have gone ahead and hand basted my darts these are the side bust darts I didn't want to lose my marks from the friction pen so I have gone ahead and hand basted that same as the waist that's there on the front so after pinning these four little tucks I'm going to start with the one that's closer to the center of the blouse right there now these pokey bits are there they have to be there because this is how the neckline has been trued and I'm going to go and carefully stitch these with a longer stitch length so I'm using a 4.5 stitch length here and I'm not going to be back tucking because I want to remove these in a little bit so I'm just going to get these tails of thread and hold on to them so the fabric doesn't get eaten by the machine there just for a few just leave long threads there and then carefully sew along the line that I've marked with the friction pen There you can see where I have to stop at that dot. Right there. You can see the dot there and I've stopped there and I'm going to just leave long threads. Now I'm going to go and sew the next one that comes here. And look how the top looks. It's supposed to look like that. So I'm going to start sewing right there. Okay, so they have been sewn, the four of them. I'm gonna repeat on the other front and then I'm gonna go to the pressing board. And now they all need to be pressed that way, towards the arm side. So the ones closer to the center are a little bit longer. And I'm gonna throw some steam on there. I want you to see how badly satin presses. It doesn't press really well. I mean, it does, but it's not completely flat down there. But if you see that all these little tucks are to be pressed towards the arm side, you can see how this neckline has been trued perfectly, including the tucks. You can see how the shape forms there perfectly. Now what I'm going to do now, before I go to the sewing machine, is do a step that was actually the first step in this pattern, which is apply the interfacing to the center area of the blouse. There is a pattern piece specifically for the interfacing. Now my eyes are trained to know what 3 8 of an inch is without measuring or doing anything but it might be helpful if you do a guiding stitch at 3 8 and then that will help you press really accurately. Now on the right side I'm going to be doing an edge stitch to hold these tucks down on the right side of the fabric and I'll be showing you that on the sewing machine. After I've done that then I can take away these basting stitches that held these tucks in place there and I'll do that to both sides. Okay, this is one of the fronts. This is the center there. That is the interfaced area and the foldy bit that I've already done there. And this is the arm side. And so all these tacks have been pressed that way. As you can see, they're all facing that way. And now I need to go one by one and edge stitching from the top to where it stops. 
you can see right there right there I can see where I stopped sewing and where that tuck is just released so it's not closed and I'm gonna put a pin there just as a guide so that I know when I'm gonna reach that spot so I can stop sewing make sure the bulk of the pin is towards the arm side as it's meant to be pressed so I'm gonna put my needle down and I'm gonna do a normal stitch length three See how that metal ridge is guiding itself against that seam that I've done with the basting stitch? Here is the pin referencing where I'm going to stop. Now I'm not going to be back tucking these, I'm going to leave the long thread and with a needle push that towards the wrong side of the blouse and secure it in there so that on this side it looks nice. You can see the stitching line, the edge stitch is holding down this pin tack right there. There's a lot of extra threads there but don't mind that. <laughs> I have these two more to go, getting closer to the center there. And I have these loose threads here from where I didn't back tack. I use a bigger sort of needle and just get this back to the other side without having the bulk of going back and forth. It will stop there really neatly. At the back, I'm gonna find the thread from the bobbin, the other long one. I'm gonna make them the same size and try to thread them both together through this. Okay, so I got them in there both together and now I'm just going to reinforce that there. I have other long threads here from that basting stitch there, so try to ignore those and just focus on this bit there. Catch a bit of that fabric and knot that there. And that's going to be secure on the other side. And on the right side it's going to look really nice, just like that. So I have these basting stitches here and I can just pull it, like I can just pull this and because I did a long stitch length and I didn't back tack on the top, it's just basically going to come flying out. That little stitch that you see there is gone and on this side you're going to see what was intended. It was just like a little pleat that has been top stitched down there. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat everywhere. This day stitch will also just secure these pleats down as well. So there's a stay stitching right there. Okay, so here is my blouse. You can see that there's a lot of blue in this leopard print. Like darker tones of blue and lighter tones of blue and I really like that. <laughs> this is the front view. Now, I know I should have done this in a solid so that you can see but as you know, it's extremely difficult for me to sew stuff in solids. Although I know in theory I should be doing that. I just, I just, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> these are the ties here on the front. I have tied them up in a bow and because it is a lower cut V, I think you can wear them in a bow like that. Usually other blouses I've made have ties, but that the neckline is higher. I feel uncomfortable with a bow up here on my upper chest. But in this case, being low, similar to the one I'm wearing now, this is the Sabalito top from Itch to Stitch, has a nice depth of a V without plunging or showing cleavage, you know? So I like that this can actually be worn as a bow because it's really cute there. Underneath the bow, there are buttons. And how many buttons did I put? I put six buttons. You know the button placement guides are always just a reference and I don't really take them into account because I try my blouses on, see where my apex is and put a button right there so I can avoid gaping. And that's how I measure up and down. That's the approach I take to anything with buttons. So I always end up putting an extra button or two and making the space a little bit smaller. I just feel safer that way. You can barely see my beige colored buttons there going down the front. You saw how I finished the bottom of the blouse inside and it's really clean there. This is the way I finish dresses, shirt dresses, blouses, anything that finishes like that I will do this where the hem comes from behind. Because the shape of the hem on the side is so curved, I did hem this with bias tape. 
Now, months ago, last year, I filmed a tutorial on how to make continuous bias tape and I made like 10 yards of bias tape from this fabric. So I still have a load of this left that I can use on other projects to make something look nice inside. But I made it for this purpose, for hemming this. So it's been sewn on, it's even been understitched and then it's been hand hemmed. I wanted this to look super delicate and I didn't really want to be machine sewing this hem at all just to keep the fine look of this blouse because the fabric is so, you know, <laughs> I didn't want to ruin that hem by doing it with machine. This is the bracelet sleeve. Now I did lengthen my bracelet sleeve length by an inch my arms are a little bit longer so I did do that and the cuff here is really little you can see it's a very narrow little cuff where the gathers go into the cuff and I actually sewed inside by hand that's all been invisibly sewn there so that I didn't need to have top stitching there on the cuff I really didn't want to have top stitching there <laughs> And I'll do that happily. There's no issue with that. It's a little tiny cuff. It doesn't take long to sew by hand inside. And you know, if I didn't hem by machine, I wasn't gonna be top stitching that cuff either, just to keep it consistent, you know? I'm gonna show you inside. You saw how I did the pin tucks. When I removed the basting stitches on the inside, it looks like little pleats there. So that was super fun to do. The little pleat there, on the back you can barely see it but it's there and the ties have been sewn on really neatly now there is an area here this area here that unites the integrated facing to the tie there is really tricky because there's a seam allowance that you need to tuck into the tie and it was a tricky area to sew to get a really nice result and i ended up hand sewing all this area here look from that place up, up up there like three eighths of an inch is all hand sewn so I could tuck that raw seam allowance that was there from this up into the tie and this on the front there from there to there has also been hand sewn now I don't really see how I could have done it by machine and made it look as good as it looks like that done by hand so you know don't shy away of sewing tiny little areas by hand when getting precision there is going to be so much easier doing it by hand you know um, don't think that you can't sew by hand because you have a machine machines are awesome you can do amazing things with your machine but you can also do amazing things with these 10 fingers you know little needle little bit of thread and you can get really precise results and it's not like i've been sewing a huge amount it's just tiny tiny areas there on the neckline same as the cuffs inside i really like how that looks you know being done by hand you know it's invisible and it's really nice on the outside so that's how that looks on the inside and you know bias binding hem on a curved hem is always a good thing to do i always do it and have really nice curve there on the hem without any packers and you know with satin any little thing like a pucker is gonna really pop like any any wonkiness in the sewing is gonna really show with satin because it is slightly shiny this one i would say is a more opaque type of satin it's not like shiny in your face but at the back you can see how smooth the hem looks it just looks really nice and smooth and if i had packers you would see them like they would scream and look here i am packers you know this was a blouse to enjoy lots of feminine details i think totally you would see them more in a solid and i should and i'm always like saying i'm gonna make things in a solid and then i end up choosing prints like this <laughs> so have a look at how it fits this is how the blouse looks from further away a general view i have paired it with my eddie stone jeans and some heels this is how i would wear this blouse out i think it's a way to dress this blouse down <laughs> a little bit and i like the length here the proportions where it hits this area of my high hip on the curve right there on the side um, so I wouldn't want this longer or shorter than this I think it's great for my proportions I didn't sew the darts on the front I left that loose I didn't sew those but I did sew the ones on the back for some shaping I think that's nice I would never like not sew back ones and you can see how curved 
this shape of the hem is I like the length I did modify the length of the blouse I did add an inch to these though because um, these are meant to be bracelet length I don't wear bracelets <laughs> but um, I just thought if it was a bit shorter it wouldn't be like three quarters or bracelet so I added an inch there here are the features from the top you can see that when the bow is tied the neckline isn't low at all like I'm not showing a single thing it is a deep V but pretty modest like you can't see a single thing and I'm happy with that um, the sleeves have slight gathers right there they fit my shoulders really well like the width of the shoulders here and because of the crazy print you can't really see the pin tucks I can see them so maybe you can see them I can see them you know I should have made this with a solid you know choices choices I think these details stand out more with a solid of course and here is a little bow it's a nice length of a bow it's not excessively long and because it's down low I can use it as a bow other blouses I made in the past with ties that come up higher I don't like having a tie or a bow up here higher but this one being low like this, I like it. At the back, you might be able to see the little pleat there. It's very small, very tiny pleat there. you think that this project has many details that you are not yet confident in sewing like the tie that I mentioned I have made a second one it's a shortcut version it's very beautiful <laughs> and it's like a simplified version of this same blouse and I'm not including it in this video because then it would be extremely long but look out for it very soon maybe tomorrow <laughs> maybe the next day but I have prepared that one as well I made it in a meter of fabric and I'm very happy with that one too and it's just a little bit easier to sew and it still looks really nice so look out for that one I hope you enjoyed seeing the pin tags if you see a pattern out there that has that feature go for it it's really fun to do just take your time do those little things you know those little details are really fun and I love doing them Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again very soon with another sewing video. Bye!